We've closed down. We've closed down. Guys, this year e-commerce is really tough. Let me show you. Last year, several people came to this floor to do e-commerce. Some ran stores and some did live streaming. When we had free time, we drink tea and chat together. But they suddenly all left one by one this June. Take a look. There are two shops here and another one over there. Now it's deserted and I feel a bit down. After all, we have been in touch for so long. Twenty years ago, when e-commerce was booming, people used to say, there's no business that's hard to do. However, no one expected that twenty years later, e-commerce would become the hardest business to run. Many e-commerce businesses have already collapsed on the eve of the 2024 June 18th shopping festival. Hey, I'm here to interview you. How do you feel about closing down? I feel completely relaxed after closing down. No pressure at all. The uploader of this video mentioned that after six years in e-commerce in Yiwu, they could no longer hold on any longer. Their warehouse lease expired, and they decided to close down in 2024, joining the ranks of the unemployed. Believe it or not, 80% of e-commerce businesses will close down this year. Many of my friends who do e-commerce can't hold on any longer. No one is hyping up live streaming on various platforms anymore. In fact, e-commerce is worse than physical stores. On one side, information is becoming increasingly transparent, leading to crazy price wars among competitors. On the other side, platforms are squeezing merchants. What's worse is that many consumers have learned to exploit the platforms and merchants, making e-commerce merchants miserable. Even many live streamers have stopped showing off luxury cars and houses this year, wanting to return to physical stores. But physical stores are barely surviving due to the impact of e-commerce. So there will soon be a surge in unemployment. The most important thing is that starting next month, over 10 million graduates will enter the job market, making job competition increasingly difficult. Not only that, disheartening news continues to emerge. Recently, the clothing store named Yang Kira ran away with 35 million yuan, approximately 4.8 million US dollars, and the warehouse was reportedly emptied, with the store no longer searchable on Taobao. Similarly, the once popular local fast fashion brand MJ Style, which had nearly a thousand stores at its peak and 4 million followers on Tmall, also went bankrupt. Many consumers received messages saying that MJ Style could no longer operate, sparking heated discussions about its bankruptcy and closure. Besides clothing e-commerce, other categories are also struggling. In April 2024, the Tmall store Yofan Art Furniture, which had an annual sales of 1 billion yuan, announced its closure due to a broken capital chain. This store, once dubbed the Zara of the furniture world, achieved sales of over 100 million yuan in just two hours during the 2018 11 shopping festival. An agent mentioned that there are still goods worth millions of yuan piled up in the store, with tens of thousands of yuan in orders yet to be delivered. Additionally, over 20 consumers unable to receive their orders formed a self-help group, with a total amount of nearly 3 million yuan. The former top fresh food merchant, Wang Xiaoer, on Tmall also closed down in March, halting the delivery of its last three products. At its peak, the Tmall store had an annual turnover of 400 million yuan, with a team of four to 500 people, the envy of the industry. Why has the wealth creation legend of e-commerce become a startup disaster? Firstly, the high return rate has become a major factor crushing e-commerce platforms. In July 2023, the hashtag 90% return rate for jewelry on Douyin trended on Weibo, putting Douyin in the spotlight. Reporters interviewed several merchants about the high return rates. Xia Jie, a women's clothing business owner, reported that return rates for women's clothing on Douyin are around 50 to 60%, compared to 30 to 40% on Taobao. New Chinese-style clothing, which has become popular in recent years, has a return rate as high as 80% in live streaming sessions. Why do consumers engage in such impulsive buying? The answer lies in e-commerce live streaming. Reporters discovered that in live streams, hosts often highlight only the positive aspects of products, sometimes exaggerating to induce purchases. Consumers, swayed by this persuasion, impulsively buy items. However, when the products arrive and fail to meet expectations, consumers return them. Look at the soy milk machine I bought on Douyin. Just after four or five uses, it leaks from the bottom. Pressing this button doesn't work. After removing the top, you can see it's full of water and leaking everywhere. 
Let me show you the things I got scammed into buying on Douyin. These are all the items I plan to return tomorrow. This four-piece set with fleece lining, despite the price of over 100 yuan, loses its fluff when pulled. No physical store would sell such poor quality. Look at these quilts. They're so light. The filling inside is yellow and the cotton is prickly. Mr. Ren bought a suit for 129 yuan on WeChat, only to find quality issues upon arrival. The seller claimed it was wrinkle-free, but look at it. The sizes are all different. One is size 3, and the other is size 7. The sleeves don't fit. Trying to wear it would tear the suit. Does this look like a suit to you? And I even bought two sizes larger, as the seller suggested. What's this? Cheap stuff on Douyin is really not worth buying. Look at these black spots on the fabric. He added that the quality of cheap products on Douyin is unacceptable, and he will never shop there again. While Taobao might sell counterfeits, they don't necessarily mean poor quality. On the other hand, high return rates are a nightmare for sellers. Recently, a seller complained about the flood of returns after Children's Day. How are we supposed to do e-commerce like this? These are just a small portion of the returns. Look at these shoes, worn out, but returned. Received in mid-May, returned on May 31st after the Children's Day promotion. I want to ask these parents, don't they have any morals? A local school bought about 400 dresses from my store but later started mass returns and refunds. When I received the goods, they were worn and smelly. These dresses are essentially unsellable, costing me over 8,000 yuan. Another major reason is the intense competition among e-commerce platforms. In 2023, platforms fought a price war during the June 18th and Double Eleven shopping festivals, branding it as Daily June 18th. In 2024, they directly cancelled the June 18th pre-sales, offering the lowest prices every day. Doyen prioritized price power and adjusted traffic allocation rules to favor low-price items. To survive in such a competitive environment, sellers had to resort to drastic measures, mainly slashing prices. Xu Chi, a clothing owner in Guangzhou's Haiju district, said, Factories compete for orders and customers. If you sell for 30 yuan, others will sell for 27 yuan, with profits sometimes as low as 1 or 2 yuan per garment. A few years ago, our gross profit margin was around 10%, but this year, it's down to 3 to 5 percent. This has trained consumers to expect lower and lower prices, leading to a vicious cycle. The price war has also affected the publishing industry. Recently, 56 publishers issued a joint statement refusing to participate in a certain platform's June 18th promotion, stating that the discounts would leave them with minimal or even negative profits. As a result, many e-commerce businesses had no choice but to close their doors. Another significant reason for these closures is the overly complicated sales strategies. To maximize consumer attention, e-commerce platforms frequently use various marketing tactics like discount thresholds, member discounts, limited time offers, and points discounts, many of which can be combined. However, these complex operations have negated the allure of discounts, leading some consumers to complain that online shopping is more tiring than working. One marketing tactic is the pre-sale system, where consumers pay a deposit first and then pay the balance a week later. During this period, the platform offers numerous coupons to attract repeat purchases. This pre-sale system helps merchants prepare inventory in advance, reducing costs and logistics pressure, while also using discounts as a gimmick to attract consumers with a fresh approach. This tactic once played a significant role in the success of major e-commerce platforms, However, over the years, the pre-sale system has taken a wrong turn due to increasingly complicated practices. Consumers have reported several issues with the pre-sale system, such as delayed delivery and arbitrary price adjustments, which have damaged the shopping experience. For instance, a reporter from the Fujian Daily found that some apparel and footwear merchants set the pre-sale period to 90 days, turning the pre-sale system into a customized sales approach, dampening consumer enthusiasm. Similarly, in April this year, a consumer complained with the market supervision department. She had purchased cosmetics and a live stream from an official flagship store, where the merchant claimed that after paying a 50 yuan deposit, the, the final price would be set under 500 yuan. However, after paying the deposit, she was asked to pay a balance of 558 yuan, which was significantly different from the advertised price. Commentators have noted that brands like Apple, Dyson, and Medea have the resources to handle the surge in orders during major promotions. In contrast, small and medium-sized merchants, often with limited staff, rely on on-demand production to cope with increased demand. 
The extended presale periods allow them to produce in stages based on the deposits received and to ship in batches, addressing the issue of insufficient manpower. However, when merchants overexploit the presale system, it gives consumers a bad taste. Although factors like poor quality, intense competition, and failed marketing strategies impact the development of China's e-commerce, experts believe the fundamental reason behind the wave of closures is the collapse of the Chinese economy. In 2020, during the same period, the Chinese government concealed critical public health data and suppressed information about virus transmission and infection rates, facilitating the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. They allowed and even encouraged citizens to travel and gather globally during holidays, leading to a global economic downturn. In hindsight, this has likely hit the Chinese economy the hardest. According to a recent report released by the Chinese government, China's manufacturing index showed a contraction in May. Surprisingly, the non-manufacturing purchasing managers index, reflecting the state of the service and construction industries, also declined. Additionally, the Asian Development Bank (ADB) recently published its 2024 economic outlook, predicting that the Chinese economy will continue to cool down. China's economic growth rate is expected to slow from 5.2 percent last year to 4.8 percent this year, and further to 4.5 percent next year. The International Monetary Fund reported that, in addition to slowing growth, China will continue to face the economic impacts of declining productivity and an aging population. According to the South China Morning Post, Beijing confirmed in January 2024 that, due to a 5.6 percent drop in the birth rate, the population decreased by 2.08 million in 2023, falling to 1.4 billion. Experts believe that China's exports have been declining, the real estate sector is worsening, youth unemployment is soaring, and consumer spending is weak. China's rapid growth is a thing of the past. However, the critical question for ordinary people is: How will they live? In the past, jobs like street sweeping, running a restaurant, delivering food, and driving for ride-hailing services were seen as fallback options for middle-aged unemployed people. Now, these options are not as viable. Mr. Hong revealed that sanitation workers have had their salaries cut by 800 yuan, only working half days. Their monthly salary was originally just 2,900 yuan. Temporary workers at the water company have not been paid for three months. The Wuhan city government owes over 800 billion yuan, approximately 110 billion U.S. dollars. The outlook for running a restaurant is even bleaker, according to the latest data from the National Bureau of Statistics. Nearly 460,000 catering businesses were canceled or had their licenses revoked in the first quarter of this year, a 230 percent increase compared to the same period last year. In March alone, 180,000 restaurants closed. Industry insiders lament that doing business is becoming increasingly difficult. Meanwhile, food delivery and ride-hailing services are also saturated. From 2020 to 2023, the number of Meituan delivery drivers increased from 4.7 million to 7 million, a 49 percent increase. Even those with family responsibilities who want to switch jobs don't know where to turn. Ride-hailing drivers also face tough competition. In 2023, ride-hailing drivers averaged 176 rides per month, but in 2023, the average dropped to 116 rides per month, a 34 percent decrease. One netizen aptly commented, "It's not that passengers aren't taking rides; it's that they've all become ride-hailing drivers." In an interview with Radio Free Asia, Miss Liu from Shandong mentioned that residents have lost their jobs, leading to frugality. She stated that every industry is struggling, and people are reluctant to spend their money, except for unavoidable situations. People's consumption patterns have changed. They see no hope, no future, but still need to cover normal expenses. They compare prices and budget carefully for children's education, living expenses, and medical costs. Once people could open an online store with just an internet connection and make money. Starting an online store was considered an easy road to entrepreneurship, but today those good times are gone. An article online noted: "The end of working is delivering food. The end of the middle class is driving for Didi. The end of entrepreneurship is debt, and the end of being a boss is becoming a defaulter." Only those who have experienced it know the hidden pain in these words. Today, ride-hailing and food delivery jobs are saturated, and even starting an online store is no longer feasible. Where is the way out for ordinary people?